I would avoid a commercial bank at all cost. When the inflation is seven or eight percent and I find people are still storing up money in bank accounts that are paying 0.1 percent or something of that nature, essentially they're just saying, I, I like losing. I'm Kevin Attright and I'm on a mission to help you with investing secrets, empowering you to succeed financially, changing your financial perspective and growing your wealth in good times and in bad. And when the next crisis comes, those prepared to weather the storm will achieve great success while the world melts with fear. Investing Secrets with Kevin Attride. So today, I'm here with Nate Scott of Living Wealth. The very first time I heard Nate talk, I was amazed. This guy knew his stuff. He really knows how to help people to better understand money and the banking system. So just really thrilled to have Nate Scott join us. Welcome, Nate. Really appreciate you, uh, your guidance as we, we talk uh, everything finance. Thank you for joining. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Thanks for having me on. It's been a, a pleasure to get to know you, and it's a privilege to be on your show. Absolutely. Well, tell us just briefly about yourself uh, and, and your organization and your experience. Our organization, Living Wealth, has, has actually been through a name change uh, at some point, but it actually finds its roots way back in 1972. Ray Poteet founded it at that time. So I go up to Ray, Ray Poteet, and I ask him at the time, you know, uh, do you have some sort of internship availability? Can I, can I come uh, spend time with you over the summer? And he told me no. And so at that point, I was like, man, if I can't get in with my girlfriend's family's financial business, then my road is going to get cut short pretty fast. Uh, but then if you know Ray, uh, he's, a, he's a believer, and he says that night he got into a fight with the Holy Ghost and uh, got some correction and, and really felt like the Lord told him it was that he did, that this was an opportunity he needed to pursue. That was 10 years ago. So I've been doing what we do. We're very niche focused. We, we only practice this concept called infinite banking, which I'm sure we'll talk about on this, on this episode. But, uh, and, and Ray's been doing that for 20 years. He's, been, he's known as kind of almost the, the, a pioneer in this industry. I mean, anybody who's anybody knows Ray Poteet if you're, if you're doing infinite banking. So I've been, it was a total blessing and privilege to be mentored by him. I've uh, been working with him for 10 years and working with clients and probably, I don't know if it's hundreds or thousands now of clients who, who I've touched, certainly thousands for our firm, but uh, as far as my own um, client base, it, it just, God's been good, been blessed, and I mean, happy to be on this show with you and share whatever wisdom I can. Today's episode has been made possible by our presenting sponsors, Living Wealth, Bank on Yourself with Private Family Financing. Norada Real Estate Investments, your premier source for nationwide turnkey investment properties. And Lighthouse Wealth, your trusted light for practical guidance to experience financial freedom. So, so let's dive in. I, I'm interested to get your guidance for those who want to improve their finances or to build wealth, especially in just challenging times. What are some practical, actionable things that, that people can do? Yeah, great question. I mean, one of the things that we see happen a lot of times to individuals that is very uh, relevant in financial crises or different times of economic turmoil is that most of us have been trained from very early on that that the best place for money is is retirement programs and so is or four hundred one ks, your IRAs, and different things of that sort. And the problem is, is that whenever you utilize these programs and economic uh, downfalls, obviously people are losing money because all of that money is typically invested in some form or another in a very volatile or pr very price oriented way. In other words, it's based on market valuations. And so what happens is they, they fall prey to the market swings and the, and the economic swings as opposed to taking advantage of the market swings. So whenever you're always just stuck in there and you don't have any money available to take advantage of opportunities, um, you, you just lose money and you have to claw your way back up as opposed to having the opportunity to buy cheap. So same thing happened back with the real estate crisis. A lot of people went bankrupt back in 06, 07 with the housing market co uh, collapsing and the bubble being popped. Uh, but then there was other people who got an incredibly wealthy on the back end of that because they were able to dive in and buy homes that were worth far more than what they were selling for 
in that moment. So, I mean, that's one practical tip I would, I would recommend for people as we're entering a world of uncertainty, probably more so now than almost ever before to some degree, especially with the war in Ukraine and China's rising influence. The, the future looks certainly very murky. And because of that, you need to have the flexibility uh, of having capital that you can deploy. So, I mean, that would be step number one, I feel practically, is don't always have 100% of your money invested, especially invested in things that, that are very volatile or that, that are adjusted quite often based on market valuations, but instead have money in your pocket that you are ready to take advantage of. First, money that's secure, that whether or not the economic um, environment is favorable or not, at least you will not be losing any money in that bucket. But then that having money that's liquid and safe to be able to deploy is, is something that I've um, found is always uh, a win in economic times. Uh, I mean, that would be the main one is being able to take advantage of the downturn. There's a ton of money to be made in the downturn. If you're if all your money is in is in whatever's downturning before it downturns, then you can't take advantage of the downturn. You just fall prey to the downturn. So I would suggest having some some capital available to deploy at any given moment in time. I mean, that's what I do personally. Uh, is I, I love to have money that is growing steadily and yet easily deployable without taking any additional risk so that I can look and find opportunities that I believe will work out very well um, with very little risk, uh, but you have to be able to have the money available to deploy in order to take advantage of it. That, that's well said. Go, go deeper. What are, what are some other practical tips? I don't think anyone looks in 2020 right now and says the economic future looks brighter than the past. At least for right this moment, all we know is we see inflation going crazy. Uh, we see uh, you know wars breaking out, which in a way we didn't think we would see. I, I don't know if anyone thought that a major power would be invading another country um, the way that Russia has invaded Ukraine and is really just – I mean it, everyone's looking at the future with some cloudy vision. So in, in those types of environments, I always fall back on Warren Buffett's rules of investing. He says rule number one of investing is don't lose money. Rule number two – is don't forget about rule number one. And so whenever you are, uh, whenever you forget, the probably the most successful investor's advice is not losing money, uh, you can really get hurt. In other words, I think you shouldn't take losing as just part of the picture. There are ways to dive in um, and, and not lose money. And I believe, I don't know if this is practical or not, Kevin, I know you wanted practical, but I believe and, and you'll hear this on our show, on our podcast all the time, that there is actually no such thing as a bad investment. There's just bad investors. Some people don't like the stock market, and I'm, I'm one of them. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the stock market for various reasons. I, we probably don't even have time to get into all that on this show. So what I'm trying to bring up is there's so many ways to put money to work in this world. There's so many different opportunities available uh, to put money to work. All of them can be great. The only question is, what are you capable of? So, so my, my recommendation for people when they're trying to cipher through the world of investment opportunities is, number one, don't get your ears tickled. And what that, what that means is don't just let somebody talk to you about some sort of great opportunity and you just buy in based on somebody's uh, words to you making, making this investment opportunity pitch sound so great. What I believe you should do instead of chasing rates of return and trying to find the guy who's going to pitch you an opportunity that has an incredibly high rate of return, my suggestion to you is to get good at something. I believe if you get good at something, then you don't need these other people to pitch you ideas. You're the one who's actually knowing whether this is a good opportunity or not because you are good at it. So that's why I say if you want to go into the stock market, that's great, but get good at it. That, and that, that just simply means get educated. That just simply means understand what you're doing. Take classes, take courses, figure out what, what interests you in the financial world. There's some people who lose a ton of money in crypto. I'm kind of one of them. I have not made any money yet. <laughs> I tried, but I, I jumped in. I, I broke my own rule, and I jumped in when I wasn't good at it. Uh, hoping, you know, because some of my friends said to get in. Um, some of my mentors have also gotten in, and I'm like, okay, I'll get in. Uh, lost some money. So um, what, what I would tell you is figure out what interests you, what investment 
opportunities interest you and then say, okay, I'm going to learn about those things. That way I know what a good opportunity is. I'm not just going to fall prey to whatever somebody else's performance is. The, the quickest way to lose money is to take your money, give it to somebody else and hope they know what they're doing with it. That's the quickest way to lose a lot of money. But instead, I, I think having control of your money and knowing exactly why you're doing what you're doing, what the risks are, what the reward is, and going in with a very logical framework, rational framework, as opposed to emotional or hope-based, is probably the best solution in any sort of economic uh, time that we're in, honestly. But certainly in, in, in times of strife, when things can move fast, you, you really need to get educated. So there's no way around it. That's the problem, Kevin. There's no way around getting educated. Nate, that's so well said. And you know, just appreciate your guidance on uh, you know, being honest. You know, there's certain things you've done that you hadn't been educated on and you've lost money. And there's other things that I'm sure you could tell us for you know, hours on things that you have done and you've made a lot of money. So you know, it's really helpful having your guidance on that. Give us some practical tips on money. Are you putting it in a commercial bank? Or are you putting it somewhere else? Give us some tips from that perspective, especially um, knowing there's a lot of turmoil right now. I would avoid a commercial bank at all cost. I think that that is for times past. Uh, you know, nowadays with, when, uh, when inflation is 7 or 8% and I find people are still storing up money in bank accounts that are paying 0.1% or something of that nature, essentially they're just saying, I, I like losing 7% per year on my assets. That's what, that's what we're doing. So I, I steer clear from building up money in commercial banks. My suggestion to everybody would just be to have two months of operating capital liquid in a in a commercial bank like a checking account savings account style thing at a bank um but that that is all predicated on uh, everyone just heard me say nate you want to have a whole bunch of money deployable that's safe and liquid where else are you going to get it well uh, yeah i mean that's that's what we teach people how to do with the with the infinite banking concept system the becoming your own banker system that we teach is how to use specifically structured dividend paying whole life insurance policies issued by mutual companies, how they can be put to work in your life and fit the function that the banks used to fit, but in a way that makes us a lot more money than what we're currently able to get uh, just going through the, the conventional banking route. So I have the a, a large amount of my capital sitting in these policies that are guaranteed to grow with absolutely no stock market affiliation with no taxation either, that I can use 100% of the money at any time I want to to deploy it to take advantage of any opportunity that I want. So and, and when, when, the, when everyone is getting afraid and, and valuations are starting to go down, you want to be in that position of having a lot of deployable capital. You don't want it to be sitting in a bank, though, because then it's just losing value while it's there. You want to have the best of both worlds. So, I mean, that's personally what I'm doing. That's what we teach people how to do. Um, but it's certainly personally what I'm doing with probably 60 or 70 percent of my assets is, is because I, I see the uncertainty brewing and I'm excited for it. Bring it on, please, because I want to I want to be able to deploy money and buy things on uh, for cheap. I know. So I'm 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 the I'm the rare guy who is excited when the stock market crashes 40 percent. Because then you can buy in at the bottom and make a ton of money as opposed to having to get hit buy it. I, I want to go deeper on that. So you talked about getting educated. Clearly, when someone knows nothing about a topic, yeah, it can be scary. It can be um, unnerving. It can be something they don't want to do. Tell us how easy the infinite banking concept is so that one can actually have a um, an understanding that it's not something to be afraid of. Sure. Well, I mean, it, it's it's almost second... Uh, it's almost subconscious once you learn it. I don't know if, if I could say it's any easier than that, but it does take a bit of a paradigm shift. And I'm sure almost every listener feels this way. Our bank account is like a security blanket. We like it. You know, we like to feed it and take care of the bank account. We like when we don't like when money leaves the bank account. And it's almost like a conditioning is what it really is. We've been conditioned to to trust in the bank account. So whenever someone like me goes out and presents a brand new way to solve the function of banking in somebody's life, 
In other words, do banking is just all about the movement of money, right? In other words, we, we build up money in a bank account, and, and so we're writing checks, we're making deposits, we're writing checks, and money is it, it's essentially just a tool to store up some money that the goal is we're going to use it someday. Very rarely do people actually use it as an investment because it's, it's not. I mean, it doesn't make you any money. It just loses money, especially these days. But um, but with that, with that being said, we've been really conditioned that this is the best place for money to flow. So if I'm saving up to buy some real estate, if I'm saving up to buy some precious metals, or I'm doing some things, the bank account is the hub. And from that, all my deposits go in there. And from that, all of uh, the things I want to accomplish have to flow, flow out of the bank account. And essentially, infinite banking is just simply saying, hey, there's actually another way to do that in a way that doesn't profit Wall Street or some bank owner, some shareholder somewhere else. Essentially, that's, that's what we're saying, by the way, Kevin, is we, we all see the problem with banking, that I could put $100,000 into a checking account at the bank, and they could pay me half a percent interest, and then the bank is going to take that $100,000 and offer it to the next guy for a mortgage, and the mortgage guy is going to pay him 4%. It's, that, it's my money that is in that guy's house, and we know this. So it's my money in this guy's house. Uh, the bank is getting the 4% interest on the mortgage, and yet they're only giving me half a percent of that. This, doesn't, this would not be acceptable <laughs> in any sort of investment opportunity that it exists where the, the host uh, the person, in other words, the guy who's hosting this investment opportunity, says, I'm going to keep 10 to 20 times what I pay you on your money. Are you cool with that? I mean, we'd all say no. But we have been conditioned to believe it's normal. Uh, so this is what we always do. The question is, would there be a way for us to, to put the, the same $100,000 in to a different type of tool and actually earn the 4% interest that should be ours anyway, because it's our money to begin with, um, on that money while still having the ability to use it for anything we want to do uh, in a similar way that a bank account would offer? And that's where infinite banking comes in. It's, it's essentially solving this problem that the banks are set up not to make us money, but to somebody else makes the money. <laughs> it's certainly not us, though. So how to get in? Yeah, how easy is it, Kevin? Yeah, I mean, very simple. In other words, the, but, but simple once the educational process is taking place. So nobody should get in until they learn about the concept. That's, that's, the, that's the only... Uh, complicated part is just spending some time. We would suggest uh, whether we, we got a free ebook, we have a free beginner's course, we have a podcast. Uh, there's also a book written uh, called Becoming Your Own Banker by R. Nelson Nash. He was the actual uh, one who coined the, the phrase infinite banking and really established the concept. So all these different resources, you can really choose any of them and dive in. And suddenly at the end of that, spending a couple hours inside of a resource, you'll easily be able to say, well, this is something I want to pursue or not. Uh, but as far as getting it started, it's just it's kind of very similar as far as complexity to almost anything else where you, let's just put money in and start using it. But um, the educational process is required, we would suggest. I mean, we would say we don't work with anybody who has yet to take some steps to understand what they're about to get into. Now, Nate, with the caveat that this is not individual advice, this is about education. What are you telling your clients what guidance are you giving investors during these challenging economic times that we live in? The best thing I can do is just share what I'm doing. Um, I believe if it's good enough for me to recommend anybody to do, it really ought to be good enough for me to do myself. And so what I'm doing is, is certainly right now with inflation, you really want to... In times of turmoil, guidance from successful investors and the wealthy is critical for your success. Subscribe to our premium content to ensure you are well equipped for the growing crisis. Tell the audience how they can get a hold of you and, and your firm. You can always go to our website, livingwealth.com. And from there, you can get any of the resources we're talking about, whether it's taking our free uh, course online, whether it's uh, taking a look at our podcast, Dollars and Nonsense is our podcast. There are more investing secrets that are quite powerful for you to build your wealth. If you'd like a VIP introduction to any one of our experts, click on the link below. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single tip from any of our seasoned experts. Okay, watch the next video so you can capture our next secrets to investing. If you're ready, it's time for you to experience financial freedom.
The information contained in this episode are opinions not to be used as individual guidance. As always, consult your own financial team for your investment decisions.